files that have uh, tabular data built into them, but it's uh, in a plain text file. And normally you'll find these CSVs as either file extension.csv or file extension.txt on all different kinds of websites, government websites, uh, other kinds of websites that provide you data. And a lot of times this, this information can be made into uh, something that you can import into into a GIS system but first you need to uh, to do some editing on on the CSV to make it uh, GIS friendly so um, for today what we're going to look at is some um, uh, inf uh, information on hurricanes and this is a hurricane inventory that comes from uh, NOAA and you can see here from the web this is uh, just NOAA.gov and they have all this information on hurricanes and here you can see like uh, this hurricane here happened and it was not named but you can see it has different uh, attributes on it like uh, HU would be hurricane, TS would be tropical storm you can see here a longitude latitude that tracks the hurricane the hurricane and then I assume that this is uh, wind speed and anytime you see that the, this minus 999 value in a CSV that means uh, blank these would have been blank information so these are just extra columns of attributes that could have been filled in but have, have not been filled in. Um, so they're just showing up as blank. So we're going to want to bring this first into Excel and then we afterwards we can bring that later into ArcGIS. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we want to save our CSV file that we found and we can see that it is an extension of .txt which means text file. So I say file, save page as and I save it as a text file. So I'm going to call it Hurricane Data CSV. And I hit save. This downloads it. And if I go into my uh, computer and look at it, I can see it's right here Hurricane Data CSV.txt, plain text file. So I can take this now and I'm going to open it with uh, Excel. And it's going to open in Excel. And what's going to be interesting about when it opens up in Excel is that Excel is not going to automatically see it as a CSV file. You see, so it's showing up all here as one column. And if I can see that by expanding column A. And if you click in between A and B on Excel, double click, it will expand it and auto fit the column to the data in that column and you'll see that whenever I do that it's going to expand it right here and you see here so this is all column A now and it's, that's because each one of these lines of texts are not being separated by its comma so we want to separate this out now by the comma and what the CSV literally means this comma separated value is that each time there's a comma here in this string of text that means that should be where a line for a column should be so this should be column A this should be column B this should be column C so we want to take this column that's in text form and put it into separate forms here and we can do this easily by selecting the column so I'm selecting column A right then I go into my ribbon and I go over to data and there's going to be a very similar uh, similar tool in the Microsoft Office, uh, Microsoft Windows version of Office. Um, you go to data on the on the same kind of ribbon. And then there's this tool here called text to columns. So uh, and this tool basically distributes the contents of this one cell across multiple cells. Uh, and we just, we're going to choose what the separating value is. So I click on text to column and it brings me up this wizard, convert text to column wizard. And this is a very familiar wizard uh, for people who work with CSVs. You're going to see this very often, not just in Excel, but in Microsoft Access and other uh, spreadsheets, uh, other kind of database information uh, systems. So we're going to say here, convert this text to column wizard, and we're dealing not with a fixed width. We're dealing with a delimited uh, character separate, set characters such as commas or tabs separate each field. So I click on delimited, and then I hit next. And then whenever I have here my choices, I want to make sure that I have my choice of comma on. So you see whenever I click on comma, it's going to add a line where the commas were. Another very common one is a pipe. 
and you're going to find that uh, whenever you type this straight up line. Um, so this is not in this case, but in other cases, if you're doing this with a different uh, spread, uh, different CSV or different uh, character separated value file, you might want to use a pipe, and that's what this little straight up line is. And you're going to find that above the return sign if you hit shift instead of the, using the using the slash. So, um, but we're not going to use that today. We're going to be using comma. So if I click on comma, it's going to go through and drop all these col uh, lines in and separate the columns. Another one that's very uh, useful is this uh, text qualifier. A lot of times there's this text qualifier of, of quotations. In our case, again, we don't we're not using that but it is something that does happen sometimes. And then I hit next and there's gives you all these options to go through each column and decide, oh, this is a number, oh, this is a text. Oh, I never do this because um, it's something I can do afterwards anyways and there's no reason to go through it in the wizard. So I just go ahead and hit finish. And you're gonna see now this text file is gonna uh, distribute across all the multiple columns. There we go and now we have it across the multiple columns. So I can see here my different text informations um, are here. So we have uh, things in here like maybe an attribute for the name of uh, data. Oh, this is, might be a, a, a date information or a date and time. I'm not sure exactly what this, this value is here. We have here unnamed, right? And then we have here what the category is and to bring this into ArcMap later we're gonna have to start being a little bit more picky about how we do deal with this um, a lot of times what I like to do is keep this as a separate uh, spreadsheet here uh, a sheet in within this within the workbook and I just make a new workbook and so for example if I'm working with Hurricane Dolly um, I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna rename this one Dolly and then I'll go back into my raw file and I'll leave this alone and I'll find Dolly. And if I hit next, you see here is Hurricane Dolly that happened. Um, so then I can come here and um, you can find different informations. Actually, let me see if there was multiple Hurricane Dollies because sometimes there's multiple ones. Yes, there is. There's a 1968, here's a 1974, here's a 1996. Normally you want to get the last one because that's going to be when they retired the name and the reason why they retired the name is because um, the hurricane was so bad that it was actually something that they figure uh, is going to be referred to in history forever. So here's a 2008 hurricane, um, Hurricane Dalton. So um, this is the one that I want so I'm going to go and I'm going to take it and I want from this until Edward. So I select all those and I just copy it and I go into its own spreadsheet and I paste it. This is going to be useful in ArcMap because you're going to want to have a different sp uh, spreadsheet for each one. And you can see here there's a lot more information. So those negative 999s went away. Um, there's other informations that are, are here. You're going to have to refer to the metadata to find out what each, each column means. And what I suggest doing is going through here and adding in different informations. Um, uh, the top column, and remember with ArcMap, we want the row number one to have a particular information. Um, so uh, very specific information on row number one, telling you what each column means. So. Um, I would go through here and actually type in the different things. So here, for example, date, time, type, and then here we're going to have the um, the l l longitude and latitude. And uh, here, I think this was a wind speed. And um, you might have to find out if this is in miles per hour or in kilometers per hour. It just depends on what the metadata is for that uh, for that that. Uh, spreadsheet um, and then here I can just put maybe uh, attribute 1 attribute 2 so you're going to want to find out what each one of these are and again refer to the metadata to find those out Thank you. 
7, AT8. And these might be wind speeds at different intervals away from the eye of the hurricane, which is what I suspect them to be, but I don't know. I don't want to say what they are until I look at the attribute table. No, I mean at the metadata. Um, one thing to be wary about in ArcMap is that this value here of north and west, um, they need to be turned into pot to numbers, and you can't have text like this to bring this into ArcMap. So um, what I want to do is actually do a Control F on this uh, D. So I hit Control or Command F, or I can just do Edit Find. And I want to change this to a replace, and I want to find in. And I want to replace it with nothing, and I can check it if it works. It's open no. Let me see why is it not working. Replace. Replace. There it goes. So. And you can see how it replaces each one of the ends. And then after I like it, I just hit replace all. And then they all go away. And that's good. And then the next thing that I'm going to want to do is I want to make sure that this is set up as a number. So I can go here, select it, and format the cells. And switch this from general to a number. And I'm going to only have one decimal place. Okay. And then the W needs to be replaced with not just the W. We need to get rid of the Ws. So we're going to do the same thing with the W. Uh, replace. And we don't want to replace it with anything. Um, but we do want to have a negative sign in front of each one of the Ws. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new column right next to the longitude. And I'm going to call it... Um, here I'm going to call it fake long and then here I'm going to call it long long for longitude the reason why I'm calling it fake long is because our longitude in the western hemisphere is going to be negative so this number here needs to equal to this times negative one so what I'm doing is I'm going to say I'm going to click on the cell I hit the equal sign. This lets me put a formula in. I click on the cell next to it, the one that I want to change, and all I want to do is multiply by negative one, and that's going to allow me to convert this to a negative number. And you can see here, 84.6 becomes negative 84.6. And what I can do is that if I double click at the corner where you see a little blue dot, it will autofill, and you can see that it will take that same formula and distributed across the entire column. And so now we have our true longitude, our true latitude. Now this spreadsheet is ready for ArcMap. Um, what we're gonna do when we add it into ArcMap is that we're just gonna convert it to XY data and we're gonna use here this latitude and this longitude. And what we can use is the WGS84 uh, coordinate system with these latitudes and this longitude. And just remember that Y is, is lat and X is long. And you can always refer to the other videos on how to add XY data into ArcMap in order to deal with this. So what I would suggest for finally is to say file, save as, and save it as a Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going to save it as an Excel uh, 97, no, where is it? Here it is. 97 and 2004 workbook and uh, save it and that's going to be something that we can bring into ArcMap and just remember that you click on the dolly so um, again in this video what we did is that we looked at this raw CSV file we brought that into our uh, we downloaded it we brought it into Excel we used the tool text to columns to put them into columns and we went through and we selected our individual data sets that we were interested in. For example, Dolly. If we're also interested in another one like Gustav, we can come here and select it. And then paste it here into the uh, individual sheets. Um, and then afterwards we uh, added uh, names to each of our columns here across the top. 
and we fixed our longitude latitude to make them into numbers which are ArcMap friendly and then we're done we save the Excel spreadsheet we open it up in ArcMap after this we open up an ArcMap and we add XY data and this is going to allow us to add our hurricane paths so thank you for watching the video